Hey guys, welcome, I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV, this is Xiala from Overclocking TV, and this is OMG episode... Episode 9. 9? Oh, nine. yeah, because we did the 8th one from, uh, from PAX, so, yeah, episode oh, 9. Oh yeah, actually, that's true, so if you guys want to watch the replay of last week's uh, show, you should go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Overclocking TV, all in one word, and you will have the replay there, correct? Yeah, and actually, if you don't mind, you should totally subscribe to it and make sure you support us this way. And if you are not into video, you can always listen to us because uh, the show is available as a podcast. Pretty much everywhere you can find podcasts, so uh, Google Podcast, uh, Stitcher, and um, apparently Apple Podcasts is our first source of auditors. Oh, so interesting. A lot of people still have iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's still good. And for today's show, we're going to have a special guest. Uh, so, Martin. Hell yeah. Thank you. Hello, guys. You're more than welcome to uh, to join us. It's a, it's a pleasure. We're going to go uh, deep dive into uh, what you actually uh, do on the modding scene and so on. And for today's uh, show, we're going to have a lot of you know uh, different topics, but we're going to uh, try to go fast on them. Uh, first, we're going to talk about packs. Uh, basically, what happened? What did we do there? Uh, a lot of stuff happened, and it was very nice to see all of you guys there. Uh, a quick reminder, uh, not reminder, a quick overview of the April Fools. Actually, that's your selection because at I had no time. I was actually traveling all week. We, we're gonna try to watch them together so you can catch up to it. <laughs> Hopefully, it will work. Hopefully, it works. And then we're gonna have the interview and discussion with uh, with Martin. So, Tim, let's uh, let's get to it. Let's yeah. dive into uh, let's so... dive into packs. Um, so you know, PAX is this uh, is this basically this crazy show that um, that happens every year uh, in Boston. So they have actually multiple ones in the U.S. They have PAX East in Boston, this PAX West in Seattle, which we attend as well. There's a PAX South. I uh, can't even remember where that is, but there's not Austin. many people going there. Austin. Um, yeah, and then they also have a PAX Unplugged, which is only about tabletops and uh, like uh, they try to remove all the nerdy stuff uh, in the <laughs> electronic way of it. Uh, so basically, PAX, PAX is cool because uh, I really like it. There's a lot of cosplays there. Um, and big thanks to Bobby, uh, who's yep. a photographer that we met there at the show, who shared us uh, this video. So it's just some cool shots with just cosplays from the floor. Uh, so you can see, like, literally on the floor. Um, some amazing cosplays. <laughs> you can yeah. see, like, people, yeah, they, they have amazing ones, actually, yeah. Um, so it's um, it's a pretty cool show. Personally, my favorite was the the PlayStation group where they had those zombies in a cage, and that was hilarious. Uh, I think we see them as well in there. Yeah, we saw them so, at the start. <clears throat> so there, there was like like this part of uh, I can't remember for which game that was. It was like like it was uh, dead, dead, no not Dead by Daylight. Well, there was some kind of like zombie kind of um, yeah kind of games and like literally there was like people all day long dressed as zombies trying to grab you in the air mm -hmm. uh, when you're going into the show that was pretty uh, that was pretty fun indeed uh, pretty cool uh, actually for the packs my highlight was the the huge size of the Facebook gaming booth oh yeah I got like this one that, was yeah. insane insane it was taking like not one third but like almost like like almost one fourth of one of the whole. Yeah. It's insanely good. And most of gaming. it was just VR. yeah, Facebook gaming, and they were doing these uh, VR slash Oculus uh, kind of uh, you know tryout uh, and game. You can fight against other each other. So that was uh, pretty interesting. But that was huge. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have the you have some uh, some of the Let pictures. Me show you some pictures. <clears throat> so Pax East Wait. was was in Boston. That was uh, last weekend, and it was packed. Yeah. Martin, where? So Morning, Both what were of you, you guys went there, right? Yes, so we went there uh, together. Uh, we met a lot of friends there as well. We had a discussion panel that we uh, will uh, talk a little bit. Actually, we can talk about it right now. Um, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty fun. So that was in Boston. That was from Thursday to Sunday last week. Uh, so we went there from Thursday to Sunday last week. I mean, you were yeah. there on Sunday. I don't know what happened on Sunday. Actually, I was not there. The same than the other days, just a bit less people. Uh, actually, for some of you, if you're watching, or for you, Martin, if you want to compare it to something in Europe, it would be the equivalent of uh, Gamescom or oh, really? Paris Games Week, but oh, that's really, with tabletop that's really big, in yeah. addition to it. Yes, massive. So, so the diff the difference between PAX and Gamescom would be that PAX is more focused on uh, the the hardware itself and stuff, or. Um, so it's um, it's a bit of everything together. 
Um, so you have this part that is like Gamescom with the brands that have their booths and all the AAA games and uh, mm -hmm. the purchasing of merchandise or whatever. Um, and then basically they have all those panels, which are basically like those rooms where you can have like discussions about different topics. And the cool thing about it, it's not, it's that it's mostly not brands doing them, uh, just to talk about marketing stuff, but it's mostly like uh, community people that organize them. So actually wow, we were, that, that's a big, big panel. Yeah. Yeah. So actually we were organizing one and that picture is from the panel that we had there. So we're doing a panel about PC building. So we had, um, so I was moderating that panel. Hmm. Uh, Tim was actually uh, part of the panel as well. Uh, we had Eric Ops, uh, Ops Alta from Twitter. Uh, we had Pedro PCMR and we had Andrew Smod, uh, Canon. So we basically had two systems and we're, um, you know, it, it the, the panels are to spread something that you love. It's something that you like, that's something that you want to share. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's interviews, sometimes there's uh, more discussions, like, hey, you do this voiceover in this game, so how did you end up in the voiceover industry, and so on. So that's pretty good, and we wanted to give our take on, hey, we build PCs, we love it, that's what we do pretty much every week, if not every day, uh, we want to promote that. And was like, okay, sure, but so how can we do it? How can we uh, make it happen at PAX East? in a new wave uh, that we have not done that before. So we did a yeah. panel at PAX um, West last uh, was it, last September mm -hmm. in a similar manner, like building pieces and so on. And then we wanted to give a new twist uh, to that specific for PAX East. So different audience, uh, even though some of the guys actually were at the PAX most, West panel Most as well. people knew how to build PCs, yeah. But that was fun. Like half of the room already built a PC before, but everyone enjoyed it. Uh, and we got, uh, we got Plenty of questions. I have to say that was very interesting, like getting the question back and forth from the different people. And big shout out to some of the uh, young folks that actually uh, show up at the panel for asking some questions as well. That was uh, yeah. that was sweet. I think actually, yeah, for, for right? example, mm -hmm. yeah, if you, if you would host one for modding, that would be pretty cool. Like, uh, I'm sure there would be so oh, much yeah. interest. I mean, I, I see, I see a lot of shows. Uh, I mean, I see the tendency of also of uh, other brands trying to host live modding and stuff. And um, I see a lot of audience gathering then uh, at those shows. Uh, so I think mm -hmm. doing a panel would be, even be more awesome mm -hmm. to just keep it uh, about the modding itself. Yeah, you need to find the, the right angle to, to approach that and um, and, mm -hmm. uh, and make it happen. Yeah, the, 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 the key is that you have to fit it in one hour. And it's true even to build a PC in one hour when you're answering all those questions. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's good we are teams of two every time to build the PCs because like that you can answer the question, the other guy is still playing with the screwdriver or trying to, to fit things in. Uh, especially when you don't know the case, you've never built a PC in that case. The time, you know, you figure out everything uh, and try to not lose screws on the gray carpet or whatever, you know, it's like, ah. <laughs> oh, you have well, the right tools. It's, it's still a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the key point is like you need to have the right tools. and. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of the, the folks that were actually at the panel last, last week actually watching. Uh, I found back, that there was one tool that we were missing, and I found it back and I lost it again. Oh, the Allen key? So, there was this key to open one of the one of the small keys. Well, guess what? It's here. <laughs> it's been in his wallet all along. So we, our team, we could not open the side panel of our case because it was using one of those keys. And he, uh, he was the only one to take it, to have it. So we were like, uh, oh, so how we're gonna pass this those things behind? So we eventually worked it out, but it, it was it was hardcore to actually build the case without being able to open the back panel, you know? Because how do you catch the cables on the back, right? Well, at least you don't have to worry about man cable management, right? <laughs> we actually didn't worry about that, because <laughs> you see, our case was that a uh, mini ITX case. And you can see, so there's the all-in-one <laughs> right on that side. So it actually everything behind is a big mess. It's just you could not see it anymore. Actually, you see a bit of it. You can see at the bottom, there's <laughs> a bunch of cables there. Uh, but that was fun. I mean, yeah. um, I, had, I had fun moderating the panel. I had fun uh, with all the questions that were uh, being asked. Uh, definitely looking forward to do that again Yeah, that's um, cool, yeah. at some other events. Uh, I wish we could do that uh, at PAX West with a different twist again. The key is to not do the same panel again. It's to always have a different approach to yeah. it. So we'll see. Um... Last time it was more one versus one, like a fight of who could build it fastest. Yeah. And we were stealing the, the tools from the other team. And 
you know, so everyone came with uh, prepared with the the drill, you know, so you could unscrew stuff faster. And then before the other guys started, I just stole their drill bits, so they could not even unscrew anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, a, yeah, last time was very different, but this time well, it went quite well. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for everyone that showed up at the PAX East panel. That was uh, a pleasure to have you guys. Uh, it's close to 800 people that shows up for the panel, like full house. Thank you very much. This is highly appreciated. Uh, thanks to the partners that actually supported us uh, for, for the panel. So EVGA, HyperX, uh, Corsair, Streetcom, and Cooler Master. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we hope to do that again in the next uh, in the next few events. And obviously, uh, you will know about it on this show. OMG. <laughs> um, there was something else as well going on at, uh, at PAX. So we did the panel. Mm -hmm. uh, we went on the EVGA stream. As yes. well, so we did. A, and we did the OMG show there, so mostly talking about their VR stuff. The well, the Valve VR headset that was sort of leaked at the time. Um, and talked a little bit about um, like answering questions from the people as well. That yeah. was a pretty short one. If you want to watch, to watch it again, uh, youtubecom slash overclocking TV. We tried to overclock the card and then we ran out of time, so we didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, actually, we're supposed to go there and overclock the uh, 2080 Ti Kingpin card. That was the plan initially, right? <laughs> And it turns out that actually we didn't do it. Uh, but Jacob said, Jacob say yes. Yes, that he that... will ship us a card so we could finish doing it here. So Jacob, if you're listening, we're waiting. You have our address, right? <laughs> so so that, that's one thing. And then there was the PCMR, PCMR anniversary oh, yeah. uh, alongside with, uh, that was with Corsair, I guess. So, so that thing actually have zero picture. I only have one picture, uh, not this one. I have only one picture, it's the cakes, right? So that's all I got, like Corsair PCMR cakes uh -huh. for celebrating, what was it, the eight, 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 eight years? Eight anniversary. Yeah, of the PCMR eight. community, or basically. Eight. No, eight. Eight. Yeah. No. So, so much eight. Long way so to go. <laughs> no, but, uh, so but yeah, it was, it was a cool event. So you did actually uh, do some PC building as well there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, it was a bit last minute, but um, they they had some uh, students from universities there that were invited. Uh, Corsair invited them, and they they were here for like a day about PCs, basically. And um, it was uh, in partnership with PCMR, and um, because we did the panel the day before, they were like uh, one of their panelists for their panel uh, dropped out, so they were like, "Can you get? Can you join us and help us with the panel?" So I did again with Pedro a PC building panel on that event, and that was a, that and was this time event. on the same team. Yes, and we were this time with Pedro in the same team. Yes, and uh, basically what uh, everything went well. It was very different too. It was an AMD CPU, so it was kind of cool for a change. Um, actually, I, ha I did not. Re I did not remember mounting an all-in-one cooler on an AMD PC, you know, without using the, the official kind of mounting thing. So it took us a bit of a time to figure that out, but it was a, it was cool, yeah. Oh, that was fun. And it was a relaxed uh, yeah. ambience as well. That was outside of the show. That was not on the show. That was not at PAX. That was actually in a, something that was like 15 minutes away by yeah. walk. A few, a bit but, less people. And uh, yeah, quite a few people around just uh, chatting and some uh, some drinks and so on. That, yeah. that was fun. That was fun. And nice cakes. And, Nicely, obviously. Big cheeks. All right, so that's it for that's it for PAX. Uh, mm. <laughs> Ultimate Zoom. Mm. Uh, that's it for PAX. Uh, team April Fools. Oh yes. I yes, yes. So so full disclosure. I haven't got the time <clears throat> to watch any of those videos. So for me, that's actually going to be the first time I see them. Even though I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I might not find them funny. But um, so, Ting, go for it. I'll, I'll let you introduce all of okay. them because you prepared that part for it. So, so, so <clears> April <throat> Fools every year, all the brands are trying <clears throat> sort of to outdo everybody else, right? It's kind of like the, the thing. And it's not really so much about making something funny, uh, even though some are trying very hard. But uh, um, so, there were a few cool things. Uh, one of them was the Google Maps Snake. Uh, which was like just like a snake game from the old days on your Nokia 3310. Uh, so you probably, uh, Martin, never knew that phone because... Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, I did, actually. <laughs> oh, you and did? I did oh. And I did play Snake, yeah, I did. So, and cool. I already okay. watched this one, so, so I, I laughed at it, definitely. Yeah, so you can basically, for that game, you can pick some pixelized map of different cities. And the world. <laughs> I can take the world map, it's okay. It's very easy to play, you just... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. You just play like that. It's uh, and you just basically go 
catch the people. Oh, and you catch people with a with like a bus. Yeah, and you have like a like updated for axe. You can some special weapons. Uh, it's just snake as usual, basically, and you do that until you eat your own tail. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that you would have. Like yeah. ah yeah no no you can't really do that like in with it, would, the map. it would be cool on the street that's what I thought but first when they did, I saw they did Pac Man last year or two yes, years ago yes, so Pac Man was nice was because nice. you could just generate the map with with Pac Man like a Pac Man style game and you can just follow the streets yes. so you can play pretty much anywhere you want that was that was really cool so it was not that <clears> new indeed it was kind of like a re retaking concept of using a retro game and Google Maps together. Uh, it's true. I was expecting a real life map when I saw it first, and then I clicked. And I play. It was like, yeah, and you play it five minutes, and then you're yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, I, so yeah, I like, that, that was one of. The, I like, yeah, I like the idea though, but I don't see really see the April Fools part of it. That's it, exactly. That could, that's why it was not that funny. <laughs> they could put it in, yeah. a, in a doodle any time. So yes. It made me think also that dinosaur you can jump over the. When I mean, there's like a yeah, there's no no internet, then you can play the dinosaur. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, something we actually heard first about at the PCMR event, uh, that one that we said we just had a, an extra workshop at PAX, uh, and this one is basically um, Corsair sort of like uh, launching the launcher of the launchers, uh, sort of like arguing for the fact that. Um, you know, you need an origin game launcher, you have the Steam one, and you have launchers for every game because nobody wants to use Steam at the end of the day, you know, because it's all about money. Uh, and basically, so Corsair uh, comes up with their own launcher, which is the launcher of the launchers. And the more you go in the video at the start, it's like, oh, it's actually a good idea. And then the more it goes into more like, what the heck, what the fuck is going on? And um, yeah. So Did that you, was want, do you cool. want to play the deployment play full screen? Yeah, I can play, play I, full I screen with it. audio, yeah. together but one thing that's never worked well together are game launchers normally a pc gamer would have to install over a dozen different game launchers just to play the games they love that's why we at corsair are proud to introduce a legendary new step in game launching technology we call it the corsair game launcher launcher now all your game launchers can be found in a single unified digital distribution platform We've been in touch with some of the brightest minds on Reddit. And with their help, we've made browsing your library of games and buying new ones on all these different platforms easier no, no. than ever. If you need someone to play those games with, just press Shift Tab to bring up every single game launcher overlay and browse your 15 different friends lists at the same time. If someone new comes online, don't worry. You'll know all about it with our helpful pop-up notifications. <laughs> We've also made it easier to balance your money on all those game platforms. Oh, With wow. our Game Launcher Launcher, you can convert your money into RG Bucks, a new digital currency to help you buy digital currency. Need to return a game? Well, you can't. But with our new Game Launcher Launcher, if you're frustrated by all those games you never play, you can recycle them into brand new games you'll never play. Just select three games, click recycle, and you'll unlock a loot box featuring a new game you'll never play. <laughs> How's that for customer satisfaction? All these new and exciting features and more coming soon to Corsair.com in the Corsair Game Launcher Launcher. It launches your game launchers. <laughs> As if it wasn't clear yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so mm -hmm. actually at the PCMR anniversary in PAX, they show it up. And they ask everyone there to support it. So as in, if it comes out tomorrow, just everybody just pretend it's true and you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so I like how they played it out. That, that was cool because they tried to like uh, have some accomplices within the community for it. And that was, that was a nice touch. <laughs> at least it's closer to, to, to April Fool's. Yeah. At, at, yes. At the, at the beginning Until of the, the video, last actually, shot, right, where she's like, eh. yeah. At the beginning of the video, it, it actually seemed like uh, legit, but uh, yeah, yeah, along the Until way, it's, it, uh, actually they could have waited a bit before saying Corsair launcher launcher, because then otherwise you would have actually really believed it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, some people would have believed it. Yeah, I, I like the attention that is put into the the game title. So it's not mass effect, it's glass effect, stuff like this. So it's like it's like very similar to the, to like real games, but it was like with fake names and fake, uh, probably for legal reasons, obviously. <laughs> so that might was this one. Be, 
might this be a tip to uh, show that Corsair might be into some more software soon? <laughs> yeah. you, you mean yeah. selling hardware on the Epic Store exclusively? Exactly. <laughs> as long as can get uh, RG uh, RG box, uh, the RG cool. box. <laughs> yeah. You know what RG we should do? Box. We should get like a big RG box, like a fifty cent printed. <laughs> we just show up like that at the Corsair events next time. <laughs> I want RG box with like flashing LEDs inside. I'm sure I we can make that happen. I bet they would appreciate it happen. though. Oh yes, I'm sure they will really appreciate the fun out of it. You can do a big dollar sign that is RGB. Actually, that's mm -hmm. pretty. Yeah, that's almost easy to do. You just get a piece of plexi, uh, yeah. some RGB in there, and then you stick your RG buck on it and whatever. It will not look nice, but it will work. If someone has uh, time to lose, uh, well, um, there's a new project. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The also, RG buck PC. The RG buck PC, yeah. Uh, what's the uh, next April Fool that you had for us? All right, so next one, and I think that was one of. Probably the best mm. ones because it was really well done. Uh, is Nvidia and their Ron personal assistant. Uh, but first, let's watch the video and then you guys uh, can sort of judge it because it's, uh, it's actually pretty cool. Good thing. Yeah, sure, sure, go on. Nvidia GeForce is always introducing new ways to move gaming technology forward. But our latest breakthrough is like nothing you've ever seen before. Gamers of the world, meet Ron the ultimate next generation AI powered virtual assistant that can make personalized PC game. Hello Julian, would you like to play a game? Any smart speaker can oh, answer trivia like questions or play you music, play game, yeah. but Ron uses cutting edge AI to do so much more in 18 different languages. Yo soy la cena de pollo. <laughs> you see la dinner de poulet. <laughs> Even the French one has a shitty accent. Keep you up to date on everything happening in the gaming world and coach you through your gameplay. <laughs> Julian, I have analyzed your last 412 drops. Your best win rate comes from dropping bunker and, well, hiding. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> uh, this guy, what are you even doing? Having trouble holding your temper when dealing with weak teammates online? Don't get banned. Get Ron's patented range converter technology. Oh my god! I got a question. How are the four biggest morons on the range converter? Activated. Great work, team. This has been a stimulating conversation. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Boy, if you're like so me, mean. you love talking about PC gaming on forums and Twitch and Reddit, but hate dealing with online trolls. Now, you can sit back and let Ron do the arguing for you. Troll destroyer. <laughs> He'll automatically link all the relevant facts, and he never has to eat, sleep, or bathe, making him an equal match for your average online troll. But that's not right. complete. Icy Fire 420 has quit the internet and is now laying on his floor. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. We've all been there. You've settled into an intense gaming session, you're just getting to the good part, and distractions start flooding in. Well, with Ron's Talk Block AI feature, you can buy yourself the extra time you need to finish the final level. Julian, I've seeded 12 new Poke Stops in the neighborhood for your partner to chase. <laughs> I reminded your parents that your little brother is a degenerate delinquent and shouldn't play Fortnite until he studied for his math test. You should now have an extra 48 minutes and 20 seconds to game peacefully. It just works. <laughs> and get in on the ground floor of AI assisted PC gaming. Be sure to visit the website God, they went down all in the, the way to do it. for more news about game changing features and yeah. to get yeah. notified when Ron launches later this year. Julian, I seem to have reached the end of the internet. Is it actually on the website or not? <laughs> I, I think they made a page for it. I don't. I don't think the web page is still uh, is still up. Um, but they, they made it in a in a nice way. I mean, you no, know, like they they respect the guidelines for the graphical design and so on. It totally looks like it's a real thing until you mm. see it's three D printed and a bit clunky. But yeah, they made it cool though. Yeah. In the beginning, I, I like how they how they started it, like with the shot of the RTX twenty eighty, and made it yeah. totally look legit. And then it's about a whole other product at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like the lens from the from the GoPros. I wonder if people actually <laughs> <laughs> put your overclocking TV now. 
<laughs> Let's see if we actually get something from there. <clears throat> Actually, it's very well done. It's very well done. So you can see they put some effort into it. Nice reference to Saw. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to play a little game? Yeah. It's like time to, play, to play. So I feel just sorry for Ron. Uh, so especially if your your name is Ron, that that might be uh, hard to take as a joke. But uh, R O N like R T X on and R T X off. Maybe next year they will have rough. <laughs> so we have RTX oh, on, RTX off. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's the same yeah. thing, but no AI, no cloud base, no blockchain, no no keywords. <laughs> it, it was cool. I found it was one of the best ones by far. Like properly done. Interesting. Do you have another one? Yes, I have one more. Awesome. Uh, I have so another kind of home assistant, but this one it's uh, Final Fantasy, so basically uh, Square Enix. Mm -hmm. Uh, who um, who did that one? So let's let's just watch it. Wow, what is it? Something very special. Ooh, what'd you get, hun? This is Omega. Wow, what's it for? It's an ancient primal being of unimaginable power. It's traveled between dimensions for thousands of years, <laughs> and it's a smart speaker too. Omega, what was the score of the Warriors game last night? Games are for the weak. Combat is the only true test of victory or defeat. What? 114 to 98. Hey Omega, why do we have muscles? Muscles are used by organic beings to run away from battle. Why? Because organic beings are weak and fearful. Why? Because they are inferior. Why? <laughs> I'll make a play romantic music. Ooh. Calculating. <laughs> Executive presentation to my calendar for Friday at 11 a.m. It is 99.9% .9 likely for your presentation to fail. In order to protect you from that tragedy, I shall delete all copies of your presentation. Undo! <laughs> Undo! Are you. Oh my god. Tell me a joke. You were adopted. <laughs> That's so great. Ha, 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 ha. Omega is like part of the family. <laughs> Omega, turn off the TV. Engaging wave cannon. <laughs> Omega by Square Enix. Oh, wow. uh, they spend no effort on doing a nice logo, but <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Very funny one. And well shot as well. So it was well produced. They spent some time on it. You know, that's funny because basically uh, asking for the result of the game, asking to tell a joke, and... That's what they say in all the Google commercials, the Google Home stuff. But that's the thing. I mean, I mean, here we have one, and we just use it for playing music. Uh, no watch the time, which is stupid because we have watches. Don't ask questions. And basically play the news. That's, that's the three things we use it. So at some point, it's more like, you no, know, can you just put these three um, trigger in the device and just, just leave it alone like this and, <laughs> and don't use it for anything else. Yeah. Um, interesting. So that's uh, that's it for April Fool's. Yeah, that, that was the best. those were the best ones. I like the one that was from uh, WCCF Tech. Okay. The Intel XE something something. So it went out like on April 1st and it's supposed to be a leak for their upcoming new graphics uh -huh. but that was on april 1st so i was like ah okay yeah that's 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 an april Fool's. yeah um, that was that was a interesting one but then it's like eh, okay april Fool's. and then a lot of youtubers try to do their own too i saw but i mean like it's some somewhere nice and somewhere like really like eh. <laughs> so yeah that's why we don't do it. We don't do April Fools anymore for a long time on the CTV. You know, to make a good one, it takes a lot of time to to really think about it and make it really cool and nice. And and sometimes also you you want to be careful. Sometimes people get offended too. So it's like it's a lot of consideration. And I think that Omega one they did good because I'm sure they sort of a bit offended some people, but it didn't really matter because it was like uh, blowing up the American dream was maybe a funny thing to do. Well, if you're not American, maybe. 
which is I think why they also did it. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, that's it for all the news for today. Let's uh, move into the uh, more interesting part of the show, the interview mm -hmm. with you, Martin. So, welcome oh, that, on the show. That's good to be here. <laughs> so, Thank you very much. Good to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. So, let uh, no present a little bit more about uh, about you for anyone that uh, don't know who you are and uh, all the listeners on the on the podcast as well. Yeah, well, I, I was wondering if anyone actually knew who I was, but I saw you stopping by at the, in the chat already. Um, so yeah, I'm Martin. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm 23 years old, uh, and I have been modding for over, well, let's say two, two, three years. Maybe I started. So I haven't been modding for a long time, but I um, am really uh, digging into modding right now, and I'm doing quite some projects. Uh, I'm Climbing up the ladder. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, well, thank you for being here with us. Uh, this is appreciated for your for your time. So let's dig into uh, your your modding um, endeavor. I mean, uh, Tim, you had some uh, some picture of that uh, specific mod. Uh, I guess you have a, a lot of question to be asked to to ask to to Martin's for it. Yeah. So my first question is like, how did you even got started with modding to begin with? So yeah, that, that, that's a that's a big question, um, and I think most modders start the same. Uh, I at least started with a pure fun functional mod. Um, I started on my uh, NZXT H four forty, I think it was, um, which has had really bad airflow. I actually have sent some pictures too, I think, um, which had really bad airflow. So I, I tried to improve that by um, just saw some hexagons into the front and then I, yeah that, that's it <laughs> um and i thought oh that's that's nice to do and i started building more computers uh, and i started modifying more and actually uh that that was my first mod and then as i like doing it big i started looking uh, for inspiration and stuff and i looked at um i actually saw like a de desk pcs and me thinking mm -hmm. I could do it as like the third or fourth PC that I built. Let's just build a full on desk PC. So um, yeah, and, and that, that project really took me into the world of PC building. Um, I actually started um, my Pine PC, uh, Facebook, tw uh, Instagram channels and stuff to, uh, yeah, to just show some people the, the progress. Uh, started posting on forums and that that's how it went from there and I actually that was a really big, big project. Uh, it took me about one year to finish. Um, but it really took me into the world of PC building. And it really uh, put, put me out there too, I think, because a lot of people, um, well, it, it, it had great responses. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting to see how people uh, start out actually just get get into it and then they don't leave that that fast after yeah it. exactly it's also yeah. very interesting i liked it your first mod basically was just air cool there was no water cooling or anything in there so it's quite yeah, a switch already also like you went pretty quick i mean in the process yeah and that's that's what i yeah that's what's special i think because um i actually haven't built a lot of pcs yet um but i spent so much time in, in, into one project that I, uh, well, that, that, that those projects are always big and, um, well, at least it's, it's not just a small PC, you know, and I like okay. put, putting a lot of time into it because, yeah, I, I think a model always should be special. So, so when you, when you create a model, what's your, um, your process when you want to create a mod? Is that like, I mean, the first one with the NZXT case where like, oh, okay, I need to have a better airflow. So you basically drill yeah. big holes in front of it. So that, that yeah. was exactly not basically. all. The barbarian in solution. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have an issue. How can I fix it? Well, yeah, how can I fix <laughs> it? <right? laughs> so well, how it's... do you do that for, for, for all the mods? Do you have like a special process or you just go with the flow with what you have? I actually have no idea what my process is. Because <laughs> <laughs> like you the know, table, it, the table is completely from scratch, right? You you haven't taken yeah, one is. of those existing kind of like pre-modded tables no. and did the PC in there. No, I haven't. Um, and actually, I, I, um, I actually start out um, getting some inspiration at cases myself because I only do uh, mods 
um, on cases or on anything that I, that I like. Um, I only use products that, that I think are interesting. And of course, that's a scratch build. I use two scratch builds, um, the two, mm -hmm. two, two large scratch builds right now. And um, the thing is, I just start with a, with a very basic idea. Um, and of course, with, with the table project, uh, project CU, project copper, was just, okay, I need to build um, a desk PC. And then you just start fitting components into it. You start sketching different, uh, different ways in which you could organize all the hardware. And I think you, you begin with, with putting the hardware in um, and designing the, uh, designing the, how the desk looks, how the, how the scratch build looks uh, around that. And I think it, it's different with, with a scratch build from a case mod, because of course with a case mod, you have to work around the case. And I think with um, a scratch build, you build the case around the hardware and water cooling. Mm -hmm. So the, the scratch build, you, you can basically build it around what you want to do rather than actually just having to have this limitation that is the case that you have to use. Uh, for exactly. Case mode. So, 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 far, so, that, so far, how many mods have you, have you done? I think I have three mods right now, also on, mm -hmm. my, uh, on my Facebook and stuff. So that's actually not a lot. But the thing is, my first mod, the NCXT mod, was... Um, a relatively small mod, which took a long time for me because I was just starting out, didn't have the tools, etc. Bought my first Dremel then, um, but the other, but the Everyone other ones are scratch the Dremel at some point. <laughs> Sorry, everyone gets the Dremel at some point. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's the the mother tool. Um, and then, um, then right away, I started with uh, with the big scratch build, which took almost a year. Um, I have a question, actually. So. That that uh, that case that we are seeing now, which is uh, I think your second mod, right before the yep. table. Mm -hmm. um, this one we saw pictures no, earlier this, that it was showcased this, this, at a. This was behind the after the table. This is my my latest. Oh, it was one. after the table. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you could see it featured in one of the picture at one of the Cooler Master events. Uh, yep. So I was wondering, like, sort of like uh, in in uh, how you got like basically as a out there as a case mod case modder. Uh, at what moment it sort of happened, you know, like w between which and which? Yeah, I, I must say I've been really lucky um, in in the in the uh, in the modding world because I started I started out uh, building the table and then I got into touch with uh, Ruben Nietzsche from the Netherlands and um, actually he was going to uh, some event of Cooler Master, uh, which was purely um, at Cooler Master headquarters in uh, the Netherlands. So I went there and uh, I spoke to some uh, Cooler Master um, officials and actually that got the ball rolling, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Told them I was into modding and at first I wasn't um, sponsored by them or anything, but when I um, set the step to do the, uh, when, when I put the case mod out there from Project CU, you know, uh, I had something to uh, refer to, to show for and you. I think, yeah, exactly to show. Um, and that, I think that's, that's the thing you, you always, uh, when you have a case mod that's different than others and you have something to show, um, other vendors and other, um, case brands, other brands, uh, naturally find that interesting. And so I, I did my mod, uh, project to you, and that was the first big mod I did and that was the project that I could show to to others and when I did that project um, when I finished it I immediately started with project metallurgy which is the project you're showing right now um, mm -hmm. and because I had set up um, some contacts I uh, could could contact cooler master uh, I could contact a cable mod etc um, and so I got some sponsors and yeah. because I was sp sponsored by Cooler Master for that bill for Project Metallurgy, um, they asked me if I could, if they could show it at First Look, uh, which is like a small, uh, a small uh, PAX East actually, <laughs> like really, re really small PAX East, um, which is about like the, the well, but, um, a small games com, so purely about games, um, some hardware, but not as much. 
um, and they had a booth there, so I, they asked me if, if they could show them off. Especially for this one, it's all aluminium that you use, or you use uh, stainless steel as well? Yeah, the frame itself is stainless steel. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm not a welder myself, but luckily I have a brother that works at a welding factory, so he can Th that help was me That was actually my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I am not a, uh, not a welder at all. Um, I have never done it, so I was lucky there. Um, and I could also use, uh, use some of their tools to bend uh, aluminium and stuff. But afterwards, it's all, my, it's all been myself. Um, so the frame itself is, um, is indeed stainless steel, then aluminium plates, um, and the rest is just bolted, screwed on there. Interesting. So, so you, you, this one took you a year to finish, or that was yeah, just, year? just about, yeah. And how how much time do you spend per like? So that's a year in elapsed time. But how much time do you spend yeah. per week, for example, in a in a mod like this? Yeah, of, of course it depends. That's the easy answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I um, try to work on a mod uh, at least every weekend, one day, um, so a full day. Um, and most of the time it's at least one and a half, sometimes two days. I work full time uh, next to ne next to the morning, of course. Uh, I have a full time job, and in the evening sometimes I have uh, I have the time to mod. But that, that's that's always the hard part, putting the uh, of fitting the hobby in, into your own uh, living scheme, right? Mm -hmm. So normally mm -hmm. I, I think so, so if I would have to make a guess, I would say I'd spend about 15, 15 hours a week. Yeah, that's the, Maybe that's, some equal, more. Yeah, that's a, equal a, lot, that's a huh? good amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, uh, so you, you created your Facebook page. Um, so you started approaching brands uh, for uh, sponsorships. I suppose mostly for parts. I don't know if you are getting also paid for your work. Have you have after having done those mods, being to that event, have people come to you and ask you, hey, can you design me a custom PC for me or something like that? Or is that something you're gonna keep it as a personal hobby? Uh, and you just like to do it for yourself like that? Well, um, at first, first of all, I don't get paid by brands. Um, I like to keep it purely as a hobby. Um, and uh, I have had people come, I mean, at, at least message me about, uh, hey, hey you, I, I would like you to build a build for me, but um, I haven't done it yet. Because um, if you would have to um, count all the hours that you put into uh, a mod, and if you would like to put quality uh, a quality mod for a customer, I, I don't think you would ever put up um, a, a, a build that would be um, cheap enough for them to buy. Mm -hmm. Let's put it like that. Yeah. So um, no, I, I I'm just doing builds with. Uh, with other brands. Inter interesting. So uh, the the PC that we are seeing on the picture, that's the PC that you have right now, correct? Yeah. Yeah. True. Can uh, Can you show us around actually uh, around your your lab and, and the of different course. things? I know it's not in the same room that you are in, but uh, pretty sure that's so going to be interesting. I'm, I'm going to have to couple this connect. <laughs> so let's hope it's not cutting. Other, other camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I like though, actually, while you're moving around, is um, what I like in your in your um, in your table mod in your desk is um, the fact that you use those pipes, those plastic, uh, basically tubings for I guess is for water pipes or yeah, stuff it's like not really just for water for for drainage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's actually a pretty good idea of uh, <laughs> and it of, cuts. <laughs> that, that's the switching of the camera, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's basically it's. Um, it's it's a cool idea because it's a good way to hide the cable, and because you painted it white, uh, black, you don't really um, see them in a way that oh, it's just pipes, you know, if they just been mm -hmm. fitted like that. It almost looks like it was part of the table or it was already there, so it's a, it's kind of like a good idea. And it goes very well with the copper Thanks, too. Man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that that was the idea. I like I liked. Uh, is actually the camera off right now? Yes. Can you put yes. it back in? Uh oh. No, actually, the, my camera is on, but. Maybe just switch in off and on again. <laughs> All right, we got it. It should be back up. Yeah. Yeah. Can Can you so so can you describe okay. a little bit more about uh what what what's your um 
what what it, what it's like actually. So, so that's your that's your PC right now. That's the mode we have seen in the picture before. Yep. So this is the PC. Uh, I am actually using it as as a main PC right now, and um, I have a very small desk, and the PC is very big. So <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, to buy a bigger desk. Um, this. Let me show you around the room. This is actually my storage. Uh, most yeah. of my storage. I like to keep things tidy. It's not tidy right now, but <laughs> I have to tidy it. <laughs> it's pretty it up. well organized, uh, actually, if you compare it to some of the other mothers. Well, yeah, I'm not I, saying I think it has to be but... because <laughs> no, that would be wise. <laughs> but for all the for all the screws and stuff, I like to keep everything organized. I like to buy in bulk, so you have to have uh, some space to uh, to put everything. So there are some things over there, and I, actually, I'm working on a case mod. Um, a big case mod right now for uh, the case mod world series 2019 mm -hmm. which have not mm -hmm. officially started yet but uh, they should come pretty soon um, i haven't actually showed it on my social so this is the, this is a this premiere, is a award but... exclusive <laughs> awesome yeah <laughs> this exclusive look into uh, to the project not that you can see a lot but this might be uh, this might be a tip uh, yeah i'm building i'm building a, i'm doing it uh, in cooperation with cooler master um, with Inno 3D actually, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with Cable Mod um, and some other brands, uh, Alpha Cool of course, which is my uh, my sponsor for water cooling. And uh, yeah, this this is my uh, small but big enough room to uh, do all, do all my things in. So uh, I have to keep everything organized because otherwise I don't have any room to to walk in. So so this is where you you work mostly. So you, you don't have like a, an extra yeah. space where you can, except for the soldering that was the, being done by uh, by your brother, but uh, everything else is actually done here. Yeah, mostly. Um, I of course I have a well, I, I live in an apartment together with my girlfriend, um, and we do have um, a rooftop. I like uh, how how is that called in English? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a roof rooftop, space, yeah. a roof garden. To uh, so I, I can work on that, which it, it's pretty big. Um, so I do all my cutting and uh, filing, sanding, etc. I do over there, but um, yeah, the rest is done in there. Well, that's uh, that's pretty impressive to have. A, I mean, some of the models have like some bigger rooms, especially for like woodworking or yeah. or plexi cutting and so on. So it's a, it's a different approach. I, I pretty like it. It's uh, quite interesting. Yeah, interesting. it's pretty impressive that you can fit all that into one room and do <laughs> pretty much all your <laughs> store all your toolings as well and. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks. It's cool. always a challenge so you, to you, put everything yeah, in you, one. Uh, yeah. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> what did you say, Martin? Uh, I I said it's always a challenge to put everything in one space and still be able to walk and mod, uh, etc. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is that your biggest challenge in modding? <laughs> um, no, that's finding time. <laughs> finding time to uh, to do the mods, I think that's every every, every mother's problem uh, because I mean it, it's not never a full time job, and um, you have to find the time in between work and in between socials, uh, wife, girlfriend, if you have one. So that's uh, that's that's my uh, my biggest challenge, I think. Uh, that to say, it's actually pretty impressive that y you have done three mods. Uh, you're pretty young. You're in the twenties, and you still you still have been invited and already doing mods like scratch build. I mean, most of the people will not go st scratch builds like straight in. Like most people will just modify some stuff and then go step mm -hmm. by step. And after like maybe like four or five, they will start to do scratch build and so on. You went pretty fast into doing like some pretty massive ones, like the one with the table, for yep. example. Or, or the one that you have uh, you have right now, and we have uh, on the screen as well, uh, with like the um, inox frame and the uh, stainless yep. steel frame and, and aluminium. It's pretty impressive that uh, you are going that fast. Um, do you think you have top up what you can do in the creative way, or you have a lot more ideas that you want to put into? Uh, and in, just not enough months? time to do them. <laughs> <laughs> well. Of course, every mother has always has ideas and has plans of what they want to do next. Um, 
at the moment I want to focus more on uh, case mods because I haven't done as much as many. Um, I mean, the, what you're saying is the, sc the scratch builds take a lot of time and uh, I've taken mm -hmm. two years to, to finish those two. Um, and I thought that if I would move to uh, case mods, that, would, that, that it would take less time that I could put up projects uh, quicker. But I mean, I've, I've started the, the current build in <laughs> about uh, at, at about January, and I'm not finished at all. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not necessarily true. It, it's always, I mean, when, when you're working on the build, um, especially case mod, you uh, start working on it, then you have a certain idea about it. But then uh, along the way, the idea changes. Uh, you start seeing things. You start seeing the other things that you would like to change. Um, you have more ideas that always take way more time uh, to uh, to make than you actually thought at the beginning. So, yeah, yeah. I, th I think I think a, a scratch build is always cool, and uh, everyone, not just me, um, can design a scratch build if you just have some, um, yeah, some Im imagination. Um, so. To answer your question, yes, I always have more <laughs> projects that I would like to do, but not the time. <laughs> well, that's 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 interesting as well. Um, you have you have done the uh, the, the co the, the co show off with with Cooler Master before. Uh, do you go to a lot of trade shows to meet with other models, for example? Um, no, not really, actually. Um, is, is, I that be is that because they don't live close to you, or is that because you? didn't have the uh, opportunity before you, you mean the trade shows or, or yeah, other mothers? either trade shows or a mother's uh, meetup I actually don't know if there are mother meetups um, close to me so no I've, I've never actually been to a mother meetup but um, yeah trade shows I, I try to go there from now on to every every show I, uh, I can and that's mostly uh, Gamescom in Germany in Köln and um, mm. uh, first look in the Netherlands and sometimes um, TwitchCon. You're going to something. TwitchCon? No, I, I don't think so. But there are some uh, comparable events in uh, in the Netherlands as well. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Because we're going to so get TwitchCon next week. Yeah. So, but... I, I would love to go, but. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the time, time. <laughs> the time is the issue, you know. T time. Let me. Do people say time is money? I mean, if yeah. you take too much time, it's actually costing you too much money. But if you don't have enough time, you can't make enough money as well. So it's always this, <laughs> this you know, weird balance that you yeah, have uh, yeah. in between. Um, as a, as a case model, as of today, for you, uh, newcomer in the in the field, uh, just a few few builds. What is for you the main challenge that you are facing as a mother? Besides time, besides time, yeah. Oh, that that's hard. That's a hard question. Um, well, I th I think the hardest, um, the hardest thing is to keep being original. Uh, you have to work out all the ideas you have and put them into into a project. Um, and besides that, of course, is um, making sure it doesn't cost you all your money uh, that you have to spend <laughs> because <laughs> every person that works with PCs knows it's uh, it's an expensive, expensive hobby um, to do. And um, of course, as a mother, you have sponsors, but it's not like this and you have a sponsor. Um, and I think that the, the time you have to put it into, uh, and the especially the effort you have to put into um, showing uh, sponsors that you that you're doing the right thing, um, that you put up the right content, um, and getting new sponsors is the hardest challenge, um, in my opinion. And of mm. course, it's not needed to get sponsors, not at all. You can uh, reuse hardware, etc. Um, but at a certain moment, you, there, there's always the challenge of having 
to get new hardware or and, and of course every mother every enthusiast wants to use the latest hardware wants to use a 2080 ti or uh yeah whatever actually i would um, love to see a, a new mod on a very old hardware like p4 p800 like a geforce 4 mx like the, like the very like the old thing in a new Kind of, uh, you would have to start painting the PCB because they were all really <laughs> ugly. You know? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were, they were <laughs> like the brown green and green and whatever. ones. Yeah, the brown and green ones. Yeah, I'm young, but not that young. I've, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen them. You've seen them. Yeah, what have I've you seen? Cannot be unseen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wish the DFI LAN party was back with all the the colors and the fluo. Yeah, and... that was cool. You know, <laughs> before RGB, you had to sort of do something. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, that's crazy. Um, but I, I have to say that um, to other people that one might want to start modding, it, it's, it's just about getting started, you know. Um, yeah. Just like I did with my first mod, um, it's all about the fun. And uh, let's not forget that. I mean, I'm. It's not like I'm complaining. Uh, I love <laughs> uh, putting time and effort into, um, even if it's 20, 30, 40 hours in a week. Um, it, it, it's fun to play with the parts uh, and especially put up content uh, into my socials um, to, and to see people reacting positively to it. Ah, that's great. Uh, last question for, for the show uh, for you today that will be, um, some people like competition, some others don't. Uh, do you, you say you're participating in the uh, World Series, the upcoming 2019 World Series? Yep. So are you for against competitions? What's actually your, your point into that? Well, it depends on what kind of competition. Um, I think that competition in between mothers um, is a healthy thing um, and should be continued, especially like well, the Case Mod World Series is a really good example um, because it challenges you to do something. It challenges you, you to put something um, on the table before a deadline and uh, the community around modding is such a good community um, that it's not like it's about winning. Um, it's just about participating and seeing everyone put up great mods, um, seeing new things, uh, getting inspiration. Because of, of course, it's not like I make up everything myself. You get inspiration from other things um, in in everyday world, but also uh, from other mothers. And so I think competition is a great way to put, um, yeah, to put to, to put all those mods together and showcase it. Well, so yeah, I'm for competitions. Well, th thank you very much for your for your take on that. Actually, that's a that's a good use case, no pun. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's it for that's it for today. Thank you very much, Martin, for being with us uh, for this thank OMG you for show. Me. Uh, thank you all, guys, on the on the live chat for being here with us as well. Uh, quick uh, catch up, OMG TwitchCon meetup next week. We're gonna announce the day and location very soon. We're just gonna confirming a few uh, small details, so that's gonna be announced in our Facebook page most likely. So, Facebook page, or if you're a subscriber to the email list as well, so you would know. So that uh, that's will be it. That will be in Berlin next weekend. And uh, beside that, um, that's pretty much it for, for this week. Next yeah. week, that's going to be interesting. I don't know how we're going to do it. Are we going to do it live from there or not? So we'll see. So if you want to get the, from the uh, update or the notification when we go live, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, to follow us on Twitch, you can always subscribe as well uh, to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash overclocking TV. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. We can find us on Facebook as well. Overclocking TV in one word, everywhere on the socials. Uh, that's where we are at. Uh, Tim, where can people find this podcast? Everywhere you can find podcasts. You know, <laughs> Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts. It's always at the same places. You just go there, you type OMG, and you're going to find it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin, for your time. Thank you, all of you guys, thank for you being too, here guys. with us, and see you next week. See ya.